Alright, so this is just a quick video to um, go back over what we did in class the, uh, earlier this week with introducing Python and um, at the end I also want to show you then how we can use Python to both solve um, one of our area approximation problems um, as well as draw a picture to represent um, one of these uh, approximation problems. Um, so to begin, we're just going to look at the basic list, uh, the idea of a variable and a list. Um, then we will generate some lists using for loops. Um, we'll look at some plots of the results of this, and we will also discuss uh, using SymPy to do the symbolic computation on summations that we looked at. Um, to begin, Remember, we discussed loading libraries, uh, loading and abbreviating libraries, as well as saying matplotlib inline so that our plots will appear within the Jupyter Notebook itself. Um, to execute, you hold down Shift and Enter. Um, and we see once there's a number here, number one, this cell has been executed, and I have these libraries loaded. This line here, a equals uh, bracket one comma two three four five. What this is is this is a list structure. Um, I have this collection of integers one two three four and five, um, and I'm saving them as a variable named a. So now, if I uh, execute a, this is a, a list of uh, values. I can access the values in this list based on their index. Okay, so the third indexed uh, va value of the list is 4. This is because we start with an index of 0. The 1 is the 0th element, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Um, we can grab a range of elements using the colon. Uh, so the 1st through the 4th exclusive um, are included here. We can also use a for loop to generate things. Now, this is just an example of what this range function uh, does. Remember, we use the range function as a counter there. So a range 10 is going to print uh, 10 elements here. We will go through each, each time and print the value uh, of the counter in the range uh, thing. So. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, again, we start at, at 0. Um, so if I wanted to generate a list of uh, maybe the first 11 integers, I can create a list with just one element. So here's a, a equals the starter uh, of 1. And I can then run a for loop and each time add 1 onto this element and pop that new guy onto the list and you see that after having done that we had one and then one plus one was two and then it kept going it went to the next time through two plus one is three three plus one is four and so on and so on until it reaches the top of the range the tenth time through and it stopped at eleven if we wanted to find one of our problems from the homework was finding um, the sum of these values, we can find the partial sums of this list using the cumulative sum command um, from NumPy. So as you see, after we call np.cumsum uh, on this list A, what we get is we get a list of partial sums, 1, 3, because 1 plus 2, 6, because 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15, and so on. So this is a handy way to look at patterns um, in the uh, partial sums. We can draw a plot of our sequence A uh, using this command plt.plot and we're drawing a plot of A and I want the markers to be points, just points at A, so that's what the circle O is. That's an O, not a zero. And you see we get a list of, uh, we get a plot um, of just our 10 points in the sequence, or 11 points in the sequence. Uh, if I need help with the plot function, I can use plt.plot followed by a question mark, and it, you'll see the help 
documentation, including all the different uh, markers that you can use for your plots, etc. Um, if I want to look at the partials, I could do the same thing. And you see now it looks more like a parabola, the partial sums of these uh, of this sequence. Um, similarly, I could construct, we made another uh, sequence where instead of adding, we multiplied uh, and plot that. This time we used the dashes connected with the uh, points. If we wanted to do the symbolic sums, first what we had to do was declare our symbols. So here we're saying, okay, I'm going to make these symbols X and N using the size symbols command. And if I wanted to find out what the sum of the of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 was up until some number n, I can use the size summation. And we see it's n squared over 2 plus n over 2. Um, there's also a way to print that a little nicer with the size p, p print, uh, pretty print. And again, we see it as n squared over 2 plus n over 2. Uh, similarly, if I wanted to find the sum of the first uh, n integers cubed, I would just change this x to x cubed. And again, we get a nice formula printed out here. So finally, uh, I wanted to just show a quick example of how to solve an area approximation problem using, um, using Python. Uh, Let's say that we have this problem. We have a function g of x equals x squared from negative 3 to 3, and we want to use six rectangles to um, determine the area. Remember, this b minus a over n is the left endpoint, and the, the uh, right endpoint is b, left endpoint is a. We find the difference of them and divide by how many rectangles we have to get the width of the rectangles, and we add up um, the function evaluated at the left endpoint and then uh, one uh, depending on how many rectangles we have every b minus a over n uh, unit over uh, we find the height so um, we can create a variable named width that because we were asked from negative three to three with six rectangles that's b three minus a uh, over six we can find the x coordinates that we're going to use by just then adding um, whatever the value of that width is. So actually, I'm going to say this is a list uh, like this where we start at negative 3 and we say plus i times the width, which are these is just this expression here uh, for i in range 6 because there are six rectangles. And you see that we get our values uh, negative 3, 2, 1, 0, 1, and 2. That's where we would expect to find those heights. Um, similarly, we could have used a for loop to do this, just like we did above, where we start a list with x equals negative 3. And we say that for i in range 5, because we've already got one element here, we'll just add the width each time. And similarly, we get the same values um, from negative 3 to 2. To find the heights, um, because our function is x squared, all we're going to do is we're going to take these values and square them. So I create a list of these values squared by saying i squared for i and x. This is uh, a list comprehension. And you see we get the heights that we expect. Negative 3 squared is 9, negative 2 squared is 4, and so on and so on and so on. The areas are going to be each of these heights times the width. So I create another list, i times width for i and heights. And here are our areas, right? It's just what the height should be because it's times 1. So, um, And finally, we add these together using the sum command. So it seems we approximate that area to be 19. Um, I'm going to draw a plot of this. So I just reload my, uh, just as a reminder, these are the libraries that we'll use to make the plot. And um, I have a, there's a step function that will create um, our, the kind of rectangle tops that we're looking for. So I'm going to step uh, 
at the x and the height values and you'll see that this creates um, this picture so these values here these steps are what this line creates the plt dot step and post means that it it steps after the interval um, this plt dot plot uh, x heights this gives us this curve here the fill between fills underneath the curve here so you get a sense for the area that we're trying to uh, that we're approximating and these uh, this little for loop draws all of these vertical lines and finally uh, we just put a title on the plot approximating areas and uh, there's a representation of this problem so the area in each of these rectangles combined uh, ends up being 19.